Sure. Uh, there are. For which it stands, one nation, indivisible, and justice for all. All right, let's move to roll call.
Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, just
the one that shows the the, the overview at Bloomfield and Rollins, please. Oh, here it is. Okay, in the top right corner, I see it. Thank you. So I, I like Commissioner Martos, I drive this and I live in this neighborhood. So the southbound pedestrians from Rollins Road heading south on Rollins, and they often will be with strollers heading toward Victoria Park, you know, going that way. So I don't see how they're going to cross Rollins southbound. I mean, it's easy, obviously, to make a right westbound on Oak Grove. Um, but then to continue southbound, I think we need to consider that there's some kind of accommodation for them because that people do actually walk that way frequently because Victoria Park is at the other end um, as you head south. And um, what else do I see? And I don't know if the chicanes, like I don't know the road width, but is there enough room for a bike and a motor vehicle to be sharing the lane safely when the chicanes come? I was just concerned about the bikers. Um, and that that was it. Um, but this traffic circle with the southbound, south and northbound pedestrians concerns me. But, and I hope that the traffic circle will be more charming than the one in our photo, something more permanent and less rubber yellow. Like, could we plant it or something? Something nice. Through the chair? Yeah. So, uh, yes. Uh, starting first on the chicanes, it depends on the roadway width. Like some of these, like if you look at our current roundabout, there was space so we can ramp, we were able to ramp some the northbound cyclists around the roundabout. We'll look at, see how you get through this chicane here. Again, it depends on space. Yeah. Right now, Rollins is there's no it's not it's it's a class three facility because there's just not a width to add in. And so, but again, this will come out when we uh, start getting into it a little bit more. Uh, again, access through the uh, around the traffic circle. While well, agreed that this is the uh, shortest point going through here. Yeah. However, it this point here, if you're crossing here and the points of the traffic circle is it minimizes points of conflict, meaning you're, when you're going around this traffic circle, at this point, you're just fo you're no longer focused on vehicles that you're trying to, uh, as you would, that would be turning in the situation where this is straight. Like if you were making a southbound right turn here, you would be concerned if there was someone turning left, there was someone coming out. But at this point here, your primary focus is no longer vehicles because you're in the roundabout, it's pedestrians. So it's the point of the traffic circles is to pull that out. So we, we'll get into it a little bit more when we have that discussion, but that's why it's not necessarily the most direct, but it minimizes the exposure the pedestrians have. It's a shorter distance, but we'll we'll go over that again when we uh, get yeah. more into it, because I'm sure this question will be repeated by many folks along there. Yeah. That, that's, you know, pads just want to go. Yeah. And we're, possible. we're trying to balance that, but uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, is that it? Commissioner Lee, anything else? Oh, yes. No. Thank okay. You. Great. Thanks. All right. Vice Chair Revelos. Thank you. Uh, so I just want to make sure we paint the, the picture appropriately. So this project is uh, was motivated by what community feedback previously, or was it motivated by mm -hmm. council? No. Okay. Oh, through the chair. So this project. Again, we there were a couple improvements on the bike pad master plan there in the area. But again, I think a bigger one was Rollins Road is on the youth um, high injury network. So there are collisions. There, they identified four, actually, there were four locations in there that they identified, one being California Drive, uh, sorry, five locations, their top five. The first one being California Drive, which we're addressing in different ways. Uh, the other next two were El Camino Real, which is out of our jurisdiction. The next one was Burlingame Avenue. And then the last one, but having actually more collisions was Rollins Road. So that was a key point of this grant application. And it had, there, there are other locations on here, but these are the top scoring ones. It, it was something that had to be on this as well as we have a bike ped master plan. So we we're able to do those checks. So that's what kind of, I, I'm, I'm assuming uh, led the scores to weigh this project and 
supported. So, yeah. So thank you for clarifying that. And then, so the 400,000 is allocated specifically for Rollins Road, not for the other three you mentioned, uh, California Drive, ECR, Burlingame Avenue, right? It's only for Rollins. Correct. Uh, but to clarify as uh, within this last grant cycle, we were successful. There were something like, like 25, there were 33 projects, 25 were funded. We received three of the grants on that for a little over $2 million. And uh, we were one of the only agencies that got, I think the county was the only one to get three. So we were pretty successful on that to thank my colleagues. Great. Okay. Thank you. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Um, I don't really have um, much to offer or many questions at this early stage. I, I will just say my gut feeling with the chicane mm -hmm. is, um, from driving that Rollins, part of Rollins Road is that um, I'm not sure there's the width there, but I know you guys will look at that. Um, and the other thing is that while the, the picture of the one that you showed, I think I even know where that is, um, but um, it, you know, I think that is very effective that way and it slows traffic down as you enter that residential area. My concern with the, the rubberized ones is they're just not as visible and they're very low lying. And you know, even a good driver if distracted or something, I, I would be concerned that they would like crash into it. Sure, and through chair with the quick builds, you know, we'll also do the the delineators on top, right? Oh, the, the extension. So you're, we're just not going to put a black rubberized curve in the middle and not have that. But the other thing, and then, I'm sorry, it, it'll be stressed in the presentation. But just if there are trade offs, right? With this, with any project, there are trade offs. Like if you look here. Parking may be affected, yeah. but it, you, you, yeah, I mean, if it was easy to just do it one way and do it, it, it probably have been done by now. So yeah. just please understand there are trade-offs and we will go through those when we present it to the community. Yeah. And I think just like Lion Hogue, you know, it'll be, it'll be very interesting to see what, how the community feels about these different yeah. potential interventions. So it's their street. Um, thank you very much. Um, this was just for informational purposes. There's no right. motion or no. I expect the uh, the next meeting we have with this at this commission there will be a little bit more discussion and so. But that that that's the time we will ask for support because you have seen it a couple times at that point. Great, thank you very much. Um, let's move on to item number seven: informational informational items. Um, is there any public comment regarding information, the informational reports? I don't see any hands raised and there's no. Thank you. All right, we'll close public comment. Um, and um, do we usually have the community group updates right after that? I guess, I mean, it is listed as item 7B. Um, are there any community groups uh, present? Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to the next item. Engineering division reports. Mr. Wong. Thank you, Chair Richard. Uh, Mr. Sai is lovely off on a trip, so I will be giving it to you this time. Just let you get a quick update on three projects, the Burlingame station improvements. It's mostly done. I think the one that's uh, outstanding is trying to hook up the, the street lights there, and it's a PG issue that we're trying to work through with them. So you know, fingers crossed. Uh, the Lion Hogue traffic calming project, uh, just to let you know, the survey is out. For those of you who I think we've we've indicated to you that that's live and uh, Ms. Brewer gave me an up and here's the, well, on the uh, staff report, there's the link to the, uh, the survey. And Ms. Brewer wanted me to indicate that there are a um, hundred plus survey or responses we've already received, so. Uh, I don't know the details of those yet. We haven't pulled it back, but when Mr. Sai gets back and the survey ends, we'll work with the, and, and disseminate that information. Uh, lastly, uh, a week ago Wednesday, we had our Murchison Tree Sale Davis bicycle project improve the introduction. We had the first meeting with that. Uh, roughly 20 people, mixed crowd, uh, as far as opinions um, or feedback. So we, we got a lot of good feedback in that meeting and commissioners, uh, Rebelis as well as uh, Martos were there. Uh, 
and they may want to speak of it, speak of their experience there at discussion 7E. But uh, so we, we're taking that feedback we've got, which was so far from emergency services and from the, 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 that meeting. And then we'll move, uh, we're starting to develop uh, other alternatives. However, based on some of the feedback we got, we're going to reach out to some other uh, community members and then try to see what they get, get their feedback as well before we bring something back to the commission. And that will be, again, this meeting will probably be, when we have the second meeting, it'll probably again in the fall to make sure we get the, uh, all the schools are back in. And so with that, that is what we have this month for the engineer's report. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions on that? Uh, Sorry. <laughs> are there any questions from the commissioners? Um, not these aren't I, discussions. I just have one. Sure. On each of these projects, um, do you reach out specifically to the Walk Bike Burlingame group? Uh, for the Merchants and True Sale Davis, I believe they, they were noticed, but we also were e news and they're subscribed to that. Anyone subscribed to that, we, we sent it out for that. Lion Hogue, uh, I believe that was in e news as well. And then the uh, Burlingame Station Improvements, that was. Ways back, but I mean, they were aware of it during the uh, this discussion in the Traffic Safety Parking Commission. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Wong. Um, let's go ahead and move to the next item: the Police Department reports. Get away. Good evening. Okay. So, um, report for collisions in the month of May. Uh, we had thirty-one collisions reported total. Uh, of those collisions, 18 collisions were with another motor vehicle, five with a parked motor vehicle, uh, seven collisions were with fixed or other object. Um, we did have one collision which involved a bicycle in which it was determined the bicyclist had lost control of the bicycle on their own uh, without actually colliding with another object or vehicle. Um, technically, it's classified as a non-collision. Um, and then uh, four of the collisions occurred on private property. Of those two were with another motor vehicle, two were fixed or other objects. Of the 31 accidents reported, nine involved a report of minor injury, while two involved report of major injury. Um, one collision involved DUI, which accounted for one of the reports of major injury. And then the solo bicycle uh, collision accounted for the other report of major injury. Collision factors among the total collisions, uh, primary collision factors. Um, were most common unsafe turning, speed violations, and unsafe starting or backing. Uh, there were no vehicle versus pedestrian or vehicle versus bicycle collisions in the month of May reported. Okay, thank you. Um, there is an, um, Commissioner um, Martos, do you have any questions? Um, I was curious about the hit and run with your injury. Yeah. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about that at airport and airport boulevard? That was a, uh, that was a, I believe the DOI collision involving, um, it was a criminal investigation into the DOI aspect of that. Um, yeah. do, do you know about where on airport boulevard it occurred? Uh, according to my thing here, uh, Airport and let me uh, pull that report up. Hmm. Would be somewhere along in the vicinity of the 1100 block of airport is where I'm seeing as part of the summary of the collision. I don't have an exact location, but um, but in that vicinity, I think the report was listed as 1125 airport. So I'd have to look up the location specifically. 
I'm just wondering what, yeah, what part of airport that was, 1120. Yeah, I think it was in the, there was an incident that started along the, there was a, Close. there was an incident that I believe began on in that region of Airport Boulevard, the 300, 350 in that area, which is uh, down near Oculus. Oh, okay. Okay, so this is north of Oculus, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, involved in incident and the vehicle was, I believe, traveling northbound. So it yeah. went along the uh, the Bay Trail there. Right. And then I believe the uh, across from the sewage treatment plant in that general vicinity. Okay. Um, run around hit a fixed object. It's it was it was a DUI uh, criminal investigation. Uh -huh. A lot of uh, details that uh, okay are <laughs> yeah it it it's not necessarily something that a uh, traffic calming measure would all right okay call. yeah okay got it all right okay thanks Commissioner mm -hmm. Lee any questions um I just to clarify there were no pedestrian or bicycle incidents uh, this month is, is that correct okay and I'm just wondering why. It's funny, you know, we're on the um, 101 access committee. <clears throat> Northbound 101 at Old Bay Shore, two of them occurred. Is that in my, or is it one incident with two injuries? Uh, um, you're seeing it, if you're seeing a two. Is that two people were injured in the same collision? Right. So if there were two passengers in one vehicle or each, like, for instance, if each driver said they had neck pain or, Something that would be two injuries. Yeah. All righty. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Vice um, Vice Chair Renalis, any questions? Sure. Just uh, I just have three that I'm, but just quick summary. I don't want to sure. dig too, too deep into them. I think I know this one, the Truesdale and Hunt. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that one? I think that was a multi vehicle act. I actually heard that. Truesdale and what? Hunt. Where can you ooh. That's the last stop on oh. that appears to be uh, two vehicles? It looks like uh, a rear end collision. Somebody stopped at a stop sign, and the person behind them was going a little faster than they should and didn't stop. As, uh, I think it was raining, wasn't it? Whether it was cloudy and raining, correct? Is there uh, as part of the report? And then Truesdale and El Camino Real. Um, helpful if you know the case number, or is it on the first page? It's on the second, I think. Okay. Oh, I think it's on the top of the first. Oh, yeah, you're right. No, that's oh, the other hunt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's on the second page, I think. It's, uh, okay, I see it. Uh, Thirteen thirty. This was a vehicle that was parked, and then another vehicle was parked in front of it, and in an attempt to back up and get onto the roadway, they backed into that park, the first parked vehicle. Okay. Thank you. And then the last one, Broadway in California. Broadway in California. Okay. Is that the... Um... That's at the bottom, uh, just near the bottom, third one up. Mm-hmm. There's several. Okay, thirteen four. Uh, this appears to be a vehicle that was uh, driving northbound on California Drive. 
and was attempting to make the right turn. Uh, so that would be in the protected turn lane. Uh, they slowed or stopped to yield to traffic coming and the vehicle behind uh, rear-ended them. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, I just had, uh, oh, I actually was going to ask about that last one as well. So if we're heading southbound, did you say, or northbound on? Uh, uh, it says northbound. Okay. And they were turning. And it says uh, making the right, in the right turn lane for Broadway. Got it. Okay. And then the mm -hmm. other one I was going to ask about was Broadway and Caroline, which is like right there too. Okay. Can you tell me which page you're looking at? At the second page, third from the uh, top. Okay, right there. It's like there are a vehicle driving westbound on Broadway and uh, two, two vehicles traveling westbound on Broadway. Uh, one of the vehicles switched lanes into the other. Okay, thank you. I think the grade separation, hopefully when it happens someday will help with you know all the cars trying to switch lanes um, at that very congested intersection. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, can I have one go back? Yeah, please. I don't know if we talked about Humboldt and Bayswater. 1315. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, this is the uh, the bicycle non-collision collision. Oh. So the rider lost control. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Investigation found that uh, speed was a factor. Bicyclist was traveling faster than was safe. Lost control. Okay. I actually had one last thing also. Um, two things. Are we putting this on our heat map and starting that up again? It'd be great to like see it as a whole over a year or two. Um, well, Sergeant Swann had been doing the heat map, but it's up to the uh, you know traffic. Um, the person who's uh, right. there is no heat map at this time now. Okay. And then my second comment was I couldn't help but notice how many were hit and runs. It's approximately 40% are hit and run. Does that mean the victim, like who felt they were hit, um, like reports it themselves, but the actual driver who hit them? Right. So did I stay. I see. Well, yes. So um, I did uh, notice the quantity of hit and runs. Yeah. And um, when I looked at the numbers, a quite a few of those were, uh, there were several private property hit and runs. So you have somebody that's parking a car and scrapes another car and drives away. Um, there are um, parked vehicle hit and runs where somebody comes out to discover that their mirror has been hit or something to that effect. Um, so a lot of the hit and runs involved um, parked vehicles where that were unwitnessed. Um, and I think I, as I might have brought up um, a few meetings ago where we noticed that there seems to be an, a larger number of, of uh, monthly reported collisions, um, that the uh, collisions that involve major injury or major injury and minor injury um, are still remain at a lower level. and um, my hypothesis at the time was that uh, a factor, not a, the only factor, uh, could be attributed to that we do have um, a lot of newer officers who are eager to take reports. And um, I see that traditionally many of these reports um, may not have been requested by citizens in the past, or uh, maybe now that they're being encouraged to make these reports, which does help us track statistics of collisions. So I see a positive in that more collisions are being reported. Um, but yeah, I, I think 
when I look at these individually, I see um, a certain percentage of those are, are collisions that a lot of times people would, you know, it's a minor scrape on their car, they're not going to report it, and, and now they are. Yeah. Thank you. It's quite a few of the hit and run on there, 40%. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Um, we'll move on to um, Teaspoon Chair Commissioner's communications. Um, has anyone received any communications from members of the community? Okay. So I can... Did you want to talk about the Murchison? No, I they absolutely did not want to. Talk okay. About it. But yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to. <laughs> Mr. Long said, if, no, if you, you not can talk about it, like I, I, I'm referring to myself personally, not. Uh, so, so, Vice Chair Rebels and I were there, and um, it was an interesting meeting. I thought the consultants did a good job. Uh, there were some people that were in disagreement with the whole project. Why are we doing this? Why are we spending money? In fact, Mr. Wong had to answer to a couple of people in the audience that uh, questioned the whole point of this. Um, but there was a lot of good reason for doing it. The, the concern that I heard most was uh, Truesdale and Murchison, um, at the locations where there's high activity, like the hospital right on Truesdale, the shopping centers on Murchison, um, adding bike lanes to those areas and adding to the congestion, people were concerned about it getting even more dangerous um, in those areas. I wrote down that... Uh, um, or was oh, Mergenson and El Camino Real um, by the Lucky Market has a high rate of accidents of cars and bikes. Um, so you know there were people that were concerned about that. Uh, there was one person that was concerned about um, about this bike facility on Davis, which surprised me because that's part of our BIS, you know, safety and traffic calming. And, um, so, uh, but it was kind of a, a mixed set of, uh, um, opinions there, there were, uh, Ms. Leslie Beatty was there and she spoke in favor of a lot of this. And so that was good. And there were other people from the bike community that were there and spoke in favor. So it was kind of a mixed, um, response from the audience, uh, but I thought it was, it was good that what the consultant showed was good. And uh, what our city staff, um, their responses were good. So, you know, we'll see what the next meeting turns up. Thanks for mm -hmm. the support. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, well, you provoked me. All right. <laughs> I I, and I, I think you I tried. summarized it quite well. Actually. <laughs> I, I think what I would just like to add was that uh, there was, uh, if I, yeah, there, there was a, a a healthy dialogue amongst the attendees, a little bit of a back and forth between the two sort of polar side, polarized groups. But um, what I found most interesting was there were people there that actually do ride bicycles on a regular basis. And their comments I found to be very, uh, insightful. So for example, uh, there was one person who was actually sitting there that was actually keeping somewhat quiet and uh, not sort of identifying a position or any or anything. And then someone, uh, one of the attendees asked a question about, well, you know, about the Truesdale, the, low, the bottom of the Truesdale there near uh, approaching the hospital in Birmingham Plaza. And said, well, you know, why would anyone ride there? Mm -hmm. And the person who was quiet spoke up and said, well, I would ride there. I, it's a straight shot for me, essentially, but I feel so unsafe there. Ironically, I ride there, <laughs> especially now with the e-bike. 
Uh, I've been using the e-bikes a lot to go from the top of Truesdale down, and then I take an Uber back home. <laughs> but uh, it's, I mean, it's nice. You get on it, sit, and just go, right? <laughs> and so, uh, but um, there, I, I do find that, I mean, I haven't had any incidents, but it is, you do have to put a lot of faith into whatever you believe in, that nothing's coming up behind you. Um, and you have to watch the left turns for sure. But, uh, you know, I think it's important. I mean, I was out walking the dogs last night at 30, and we're going into summer now. And I saw, and I won't go into my own opinions, but I mean, I saw three, you know, young teenagers on bikes going down through there mm -hmm. at 1130 at night. So, so this is, you know, I, I, I found the dialogue there. I, I'd say, I'd say, I think you'd probably agree. The majority of it was positive and supportive and people actually trying to find some solutions. Well, I'm sorry, I, I missed it, but I look forward to, you know, seeing the next phase. Um, good to know that there was dialogue, no punching. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's then move on to agenda item number eight, the committee and subcommittee reports. Um, is there any public comment um, on this report? No, no email. Public comment there. And um, Burlingame Avenue pedestrian safety improvements. Shirley, any report? Um, nothing to report, but I do, now that I'm like recovered from the project I've been doing the last three months, um, I would like to talk with you about Burlingame Avenue. And then also I saw that the city council is considering making Burlingame Avenue part-time best train only in areas. So I think that might be something we could talk about too. It's an interesting concept. Kind of going back, do they approve anything at city council? Through chair, I think the economic subcommittee, they, it's just similar to like during COVID where they would shut down yeah. that block of uh, Burlingame Avenue. I think they want to revisit that, except, you know, it's just purely pedestrian, not to expand tables and chairs, but. I believe that's the uh, uh, direction that that's going. So uh, just for maybe a couple of weeks during the uh, summer, so. Yeah, kind of a fun novel idea that's worth um, trying to see if it works on Billingham Avenue. So I'll, I'll get in touch with you about it now that I finally got a final on my permit. So that's good, thank you. Okay, um, next is the BIS school safety study. Um, and I have to, I'm just going to take a break real quick and say that um, Commissioner Eng had notified us that he had a school conflict this evening and he was not going to be attending. Um, but I think we forgot that he had contacted, it was a while ago because he was so proactive. So he texted me back and that is why he's not present today, but it, I'm expected it was just um, forgotten Yeah, I had by a chair. <laughs> but it's new two dates, didn't he? That he wasn't going to be okay. I, I know the second one. Okay. Um, so for our school safety study, you know, right now, as you know, we're just um, we're, we're still meeting to help with implementation and ensure that it happens in a timely fashion. Um, I think Michael Sai has been on vacation, but I really would love to um, make sure that this is on the update for engineering report next month and and um, details. So you know, we had hoped to have this. Um, rolled out and introduced to BIS um, prior to the end of school. And then that hasn't really happened. So the next step is definitely needs to be in place before the beginning of school. Um, I saw something about the PTA. Uh, we were invited to a BIS PTA meeting. Your chair. And I think they were having it like that. That, that yeah. we We're trying to reach out. I, uh, I was trying to work with the side of we'll, We'll uh, reach out to the uh, PTA president and see if there's something we can at least introduce to them during the summer for those that are here. Just, to, I mean, uh, we don't expect a high turnout, but we'll at least try to get that. Okay. That was that. Yeah, because there was, an, I would have been happy to attend, but there was no, it was that day and that was not going to happen. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's really it, but I definitely want to, you know, make sure that we move forward um, efficiently and quickly for this to implement it. Um, and then um, Vice Chair Rebelis and Commissioner Lee, you all, I think, 
for the last um, US 101 bicycle head can, can uh, sorry, can, I keep saying conductivity, connectivity that um, I understand is a report that will be brought to us next month, or is it? That's right. Next yes. Month? Yeah. I'm, I don't know if you, we just couldn't sync up and, and get that the last final pieces. I actually have a draft of it, and Adrian, Commissioner Adrian was uh, uh, reviewing that, and then she was going to add to that. Yeah. I just we just have that. No problem. So we'll have it. I'm just, we'll have it in something for you. That I mean, that way Commissioner Ang won't miss out. So it's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, let's uh, move on to future agenda items. Mr. Wong, what do we have in store? Well, the previously mentioned 101 uh, report, uh, mm -hmm. look at PIS is an upgrade. Uh, and stuff that uh, Sergeant Roberts indicated, you know, there's some, uh, our access burling game we're getting a lot of traction on uh, some discussion items and I'll see where they go. We're, we're working with the, some of the neighborhoods on some of the stuff. So if we can solve it by ourselves, we won't need the uh, traffic parking commission, but if not, we may bring it here for further discussion. Got it. Okay, great. Are, are we able to request something? Um, if you, yeah, we can, I think, do we have to vote on that or I can't remember? I think it has to be seconded. Yeah. Yes. Oh, just a question about, are we gonna have an update on the bicycle lanes um, between Broadway and Oak Grove? So that, would that be in our engineering report, maybe? It can. Uh, um, yeah, uh, the latest update is we, we went out to bid and we had the unusual circumstance. It has happened, I think, in any of our, uh, there were no bidders. Oh. So we had to contact the contractors and find out. And there's just certain things about the certain project. It's mostly striping, but we're going to rebid that. Oh, okay. That that was in the books and it's supposed to be, yeah. So that was something unusual that that is because we asked, what do you do? So we, we followed up and found out the reason. So we're going to try to make sure we prod them a little bit. All right. Okay. There's our update. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, great. So I think I beat your record, right, Chair Rebelis? I, I <laughs> move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> All in favor? All right. All right. Unanimous okay. consent. Thank you.